Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class today. The subject of the class today will be PCB uh, PDN plane resonance. <clears throat> Please remember that we was talking about on chip PDN designs in the last class. Uh, I was talking about a method to control um, just a just a second I have very important call right now I'm gonna start class right now for a minute and okay let's continue the class. I'm very sorry for that. I sometimes I'm gonna spend a couple of seconds um, to send text message because I have a very important meeting and presentation this afternoon. Let's continue. This is our real life. Um, also, uh, in the when I was talking about on chip PDN designs, we was talking about how to create uh, on chip capacitance and how to control the resistance of PDN network inside chip and what would be ultimate uh, loop inductance of power delivery network inside chip. Also, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we was talking of, about package level PDN. It may have certain resonances due to the CDR decoupling capacity resonances and parallel decoupling capacity resonances. Also, uh, I, I was telling you that uh, it may have certain inductance at the end. <clears throat> Today, uh, the subject of class will be morely on the PCB level uh, PDN issue. Especially, I'm going to talk more detail about plane resonances. In the package level, decap might be major source of uh, resonances and it will control the capacitance and resistance and inductance. It will uh, determine the PDN impedances at the mid frequency range. At the high frequency range, on chip decap and the grid design or the finger design, network design will control the RLC of the gigahertz range. Now, today I'm going to focus more on the plane resonance at which usually occurs at the PCB level. Uh, please remember that uh, usually the PDN traces are creating inductance. Usually a trace or via is responsible for of inductance at uh, uh, PDN traces. I'd like to remind you that the ideal impedance of PDN network should be very, very low impedance. However, because of this uh, P PDN traces at PCB level or package level, or even inside chip level, it will have some inductance. Because of this inductance, impedance will grow at a higher frequencies. In order to minimize the inductance and the resulting impedance, impedance, we want to have very wider line, wider line, and we want to have very thin dielectric, or you, you want to have higher dielectric material. That will, because impedance is usually can be described by L divided by C, by having this direction, wider W, thinner thickness, and higher dielectric constant will bring the PDN impedance to a low value. But one, one thing I would like to emphasize at this moment is why the W will decrease the inductance and will increase the capacitance that will bring the PDN impedance to very low value. That is what we want for PDN design. 
Um, because of that, eventually we're gonna have very planar structures. Planar structure means W is very wide and the ground metal and power metal will have same width. In the case of signal traces, we are controlling W to make it 50 ohm. But in the PDN uh, structures, we want to make it that less than milli ohm range. And in order to do that, a power and ground interconnection structure are uh, required to have this planar of PDN structures. That is why we are usually having planar PDN structure at PCB and package level interconnections. Inside on chip, because there is a metal design rules, there are certain limitation of metal coverages on a silicon chip because of, I don't know, addition or something. And so we cannot uh, put whole power plane inside chip. That is why we have some grid type or finger type PDN structures inside chip because we have certain percent of coverage of metal on silicon vapors. But in package and PCB level, whole vapor, whole surface can be covered with power and metal planes. That's why uh, in PCB and package uh, interconnection, we prefer to use planar PDN structures. And if we use the planar PDN structures, the impedance will be much smaller than uh, traces case. That's why we need a planar PDN structures in PCB and package. But as you know, single plane could be a good uh, solution for low impedance. But what I'm saying is that we will have multiple power planes, P1, P2, and Pn. And also we're gonna have multiple ground plane, G1, G2, and Gn. Usually these planes are coupled together. They are facing ground plane and power plane will be, be looking at each other to minimize the impedance caused by this power and ground plane. Also, I would like to remind you that number of ground and power plane will increase. In the future, right now, some of high performance computing systems has more than 100 layers. Probably in the future, it could number could be more than 1000. So vertical integration of planar PDN structures will, signific will be significantly increased in the future. Already right now, it has uh, very high numbers. Between power and ground plane, we're gonna have high dielectric material and very thin. Uh, that, that will help to uh, reduce the impedance. There are two reasons why we are having higher number N. Because uh, each chip has many different powers, core powers, IO powers, PLL powers, there are many different uh, IOs and many different cores and many different analog circuits. So each circuit block may need separate power and ground uh, sources because they want to isolate power noise from high speed distal noise circuit from uh, analog circuit or very important uh, noise sensitive circuits. So, one, one of the reasons we have this high number is that we have many different um, circuits. Uh, so we need many different power supplies. Second uh, background to have higher uh, number is because if we connect this power ground planes, then actual impedance will be, uh, will be reduced by divided by N. 
So that is the uh, parallel connection of uh, power supply network impedance. So because of that, um, so what number one message right now at this moment, which I would like to tell you right now is that in the package and PCB level, number of layer will be increased. Number of uh, ground and power pairs will be increased. And that is because we want to effectively reduce the PDN impedance at the PCB and package level. At the same time, I would like to show you that also we're going to have many signal layers on the top of ground plane because we have many interconnections because we want to increase the data rate between GPU and DRAM and between memory and memory. And also, um, yeah, that is so because of to make all the connectivity, we need higher number of uh, signal layers. And at each signal layers, we are supposed to have ground reference plane. That's why we have higher and higher number of layers in the future. Now, if we have this planar structure, here we have planar structure, we have ground plane, and we have power plane, they are facing each other uh, in a planar format to reduce the impedance. And let's assume that we are having signal traces that is switching from number one layer to number four layer. This is layer one, this is layer two, this is layer three, and this is layer four. Let's assume they are switching from layer one to layer four. One possibility is that we may have CPU is placed on here and maybe DRAM may be placed on the bottom of uh, your PCB or your GPU may be placed on the top layer, layer one, and you may have DRAM on layer four. In those cases, you may have to make a connection between layer one to layer four through or via. But here, here is the one interesting thing is that in the when you are sending signal on layer one, return current, return current will be conducted on the top surface of this ground plane. That is what is the definition of transmission line. Meanwhile, in this four layer specific case, because on layer four, your signal is traveling to the G direction on layer four, then your return current will be conducted to the bottom surface of power plane. Because return current does not understand human language. They don't understand what is ground and what is power. And return current is only controlled by Maxwell equations. That means that your return current will be conducted on a surface, metal surface, that is adjacent to your metal signal line. In this case, if you make a transmission line, your return current metal will be the power plane. It means it may have certain bias. So, which means that this return current, which is coming back to this uh, bottom surface of power plane, has to connect it to the top surface of ground plane. But however, you cannot connect them using the metal or a register because power and ground should be isolated. Power voltage may be 1.1 volt, ground should be zero volt. If you then connect, it will be the short circuit. That is not what we want. So the only way this return current can switch from power plane to ground plane is to displacement current between power and ground plane. I'd like to emphasize that power and ground plane has certain capacitance because they are facing each other. 
they are looking at each other. So because of that, they may have certain parasitic capacitance. So return current actually is going through this displacement current. At the bottom surface of the power plant, it is going through the very high frequency current. So it is a superposition of uh, DC voltage at power plane and with this current. However, between ground plane and power plane, it has go at a form of displacement current, displacement current, that is capacitive current. And then it is changing to conductive current at the top surface of ground. Um, at some point in the class in this semester, I told you that ground design is 10 times more difficult than signal line design, that this is one example. Ground current is not conducted through what you are expecting, but actual ground return current is going through many different plastic paths. Sometimes it's going through the power plane, sometimes it is going through the displacement current, sometimes it is going through the shash, or sometimes it is going through the uh, ground plane. This return current actually is very frequency dependent. Plus termination. Depending on how you terminate your signal line, uh, sometimes it is terminated to bias, sometimes it is terminated to ground, and sometimes it is terminated with some circuits such as equalizers. So very complicated situation. At a low frequencies, it is going through minimal resistance path. In the, mini, uh, in the medium frequency ranges, it is going through the minimal impedance path, which is usually controlled by the capacitance. So this is one example, but this is not the end. If you have displacement current, it is becoming a source current for excitation of some of electromagnetic field will propagate along this power and ground plane. And at the end of this power and ground plane is actually open and it's gonna be deflected. And this wave will be deflected again by the, uh, at some point in the middle point or at the end. So there is gonna be a multiple deflections and it's going to create standing wave. Standing wave means it is a, a little bit complicated uh, concept right now. I'm very sorry for that. Let's assume that if this is power and ground plane, uh, sometimes a certain frequency field will have this uh, distributions. At the end, it's gonna be zero. At the center, it may be maximum. And sometimes it may have this kind of distribution. That means at the end, you may have minimal field uh, voltage and current. At the same time, you may have maximum current at the center. So you're gonna create a uh, standing wave. That means at certain frequencies of resonance, you have maximum energy will be stored between power and ground plane. And at the end, it's gonna be radiated outside and it's gonna be source of EMI. Very interesting point is that at certain frequencies, it has maximum standing voltage and current, and it's gonna have maximum EMI. And that frequency is called resonance frequencies. And this equation later, probably next class, I'm going to drive these equations. And this resonance frequency is depending on size of pla this planar structure A and B, X direction A, X y direction b and some distance this number from m could start from 0 to 1 and very large numbers 
Also, I would like to emphasize is that because this field distribution is very depending on position, depending on your position, this resonance frequency will not be changed, but amplitude of this resonance uh, peaks will be very heavily depending on the PR position. And this will control the EMI plus GPDN. I have many cases of plain resonance excitation. This is the first very simple um, example. Here, this is summary of my presentation right now. We are prefer to have planar structures. In PCB, planar structures, that's why we want to have planar structures. And if we have the turn current break intentionally or non-intentionally, there are hundreds of cases that you, you knowingly or mistakenly make the turn current break. If you have return current break, you're gonna generate the displacement current and it's gonna generate standing wave at the power and ground plane and if you have a standing wave, you have, depending on different modes, number M and N, you may have different voltage and current distributions in two dimensional way in your PCB. And at these resonances, you will have very large um, EMI and PDN peaks. This is we want to avoid it. And this resonance frequency will be determined by the PCB size plus position of your VR. This is the very short summary of this slide. Uh, Jun Sang, I, uh, Jun Young, I, I see your face there. Uh, thank, you. thank you for turning on your um, camera. Uh, Jun Young, can you? A, a little bit, it, it may be a little bit difficult. This is one of the highlight of this semester class, very complicated issue from planar structure, number two, the turn current, number three, displacement current, number four, uh, standing wave generation, number five, field distribution, number six and seven, and EMI and GPDN, number eight is resonance frequencies, number nine is PRD. Many subjects are involved here. Would you shortly summarize this slide for me? 네, 그럼 PCB나 이제 패키지 PDN 설계할 때 이제 플레인 파워 그라운드를 사용하는데요. 근데 이제 그 시그널이 이제 위 레이어에서 아래 시그널 레이, 레이어로 갈때 이제 원하지 않는 리턴 커렌트 패스가 발생하고 이게 이제 또한 디스플레이먼트 리턴 커렌트 이제 파라스틱에 의해서 존재하게 되는데 이, 이 디스플레이먼트 리턴 커넨트가 EMI를 발생시키는 이제 스탠딩 웨이브를 발생시키고요. 이제 그리고 이런 스탠딩 웨이브, 이런 디스플레이먼트 리턴 커넨트가 이제 PDN, 아니, 뭐야, PDN 임피던스 피트도 발생시키고, 어, 그래서 이런 공진을 이제 미니마이즈 하기 위해서 비하 포지션이 이제 중요하다고 말씀하셨습니다. 준영이 천재 아니야? 나 이거 허접하게 강의하는데 또 어떻게 다 알아듣지? 근데 하여튼 핵심은 우리 강의 어, 뭐 시간도 한개 있고 다음 주 선거도 해도 그라운드 얘기를 안 하고 어, 뭐 자세히 하면 완전히 멘붕에 빠질까 봐 한다는데 우리가 하여튼 PCB 설계 하다 보면 회로도와 다르게 회로도는 그냥 그라운드는 다 연결돼 있다고 보는데 사실은 그라운드 이렇게 뚝뚝 끊어진다는 거예요 리턴 크런트가. 이제 이거는 이제 그런 소스 입장에서는 근데 하여튼 파워 그라운드 플레인이 되면 사이즈 모드 넘버 비아 포지션에 따라서 어, 어 레조넌스 피크들이 발생하고 크기가 이렇게 결정이 되는데 이게 피디엔 임피던스 피크가 생기면 거기서 EMI가 생기고 노이즈가 많이 커플링이 되고 PSIJ가 생기고 하거든요. 예 그렇습니다. 예 thank you for your summary. Um, so there are many things are involved in this uh, uh, slide, but the major focus will be plane resonance excitation. That means 
what kind of situation we may have which excite this power ground plane resonances. Now I'd like to continue to next one uh, case of power ground plane resonance excitation. Here we have power uh, ground plane and we have power plane. Let's assume that we have uh, switching devices, IO or core switching devices that is switching with a certain period, very fastly switching current. Then the current to the power will be supplied through this via. In this previous via, this via or in this previous slide, this signal via was exciting this power ground plane resonances. But in this case, power via will be responsible for this power ground plane resonance. It will create, this, this is becoming a small size antenna. And it will create the region of uh, electromagnetic waves inside power and ground plane. It is gonna reflect it at the end because of open terminations. And by multiple deflections, we're gonna uh, generate the standing wave. And at this, sometimes the length of this line could be A, sometimes this could be half wavelength, sometimes it could be full wavelength. So it could be M wavelength. A certain frequency, it is very well matched to half wavelength of your uh, signal. This digital signal has very broadband electromagnetic wave at certain frequencies it will meet these resonances. And it's gonna create a resonance and EMI and high impedance PD and peaks. In the previous case, I wanna remind you that signal via was responsible for generation of this power ground plane resonance. And in this specific case, this power via is responsible for excitation of this power ground plane resonances. Please remember that how many signal bias we may have in a PCB, especially for data center, server computer or supercomputers. Could be more than thousand at this moment. But in the future, I think it will be 10 to six. So how are you gonna control all these via excitations and return current break? Engineer can spend maybe a week or a month to check all this connectivity and return current. I would say computer has to automatically check this kind of situation. So in the future, I believe that we will more, more heavily depending on the uh, CAD's environment to check all these cases. Conventional PCB and package designer or even circuit designer never consider uh, return current and displacement current issues. They are assuming when they are doing the spy simulations or they are designing their analog circuit or digital circuit, they just assume that ground is ground. All their ground is well connected with the minimal impedance and they uh, return current will be smoothly transit from source to a, a receiver and receiver to source, but that is not true. This is very hidden and very uh, special area that signal integrity engineer can work very closely. But what I'm saying at this moment is the number of vias in a package or a PCB could be more than thousand. How can you do that? And some years ago, when I was responsible for package design for HDMI chip, 
in Silicon Valley, at that time, the number of VR was about 100 to 200. I spent almost a week to check every return current of signal, VR, and power, and ground VR. That is because uh, they never had any problem or issues associated with package. Um, I think the rules are same right now, even though we are fighting much more complicated system in these days, but still we have to check that. Human high level engineer will, can do that, or sometimes CAD automotive uh, software can do that. And, but someone has to design their software to check this kind of return current issues. Sometimes it is necessary, we have to uh, calculate the EMI level because of this uh, VR and because of this high impedance PDN peaks. And sometimes we have to check the power supply induced jitter caused by this single signal via return current break and some resonance frequencies. Second case, which I was talking about is the power via. Now let's look at third case. Let's assume that we have power plane is on the top and ground plane is on the bottom and power is connected to switching devices. I switching devices switching device has certain current and of course return current has certain current may have certain time domain forms in the case we are assuming this ground is connected to this ground plane and then in this case it is ground via and this ground via is supposed to or ground via can anyway it is a, just a metal and it has very high frequency switching current and it is becoming an antenna and it can create this uh, resonances at power and ground planes this is the second third examples of a power ground plane resonance excitation which can occur at package and PCB power and ground plane. Another uh, case is that now these are typical three cases of uh, power ground plane excitation and the conclusion is FIA is very important source of excitations. Why do we need VR? Because we have very vertical interconnect, vertical inter, inter, integrations, and we need interconnections between devices to devices and traces to traces, plane to plane. And in the three dimensional vertical interconnection, we always need VR. And please remember that uh, because we, uh, in, the, in the case of uh, AI, computers, we need more and more interconnections between GPU and memory, and we want to minimize the length of interconnections. And in order to do that, we prefer to have 3D vertical integrations. As far as you, we want to go to vertical 3D inter inter integrations, the number of VR will increase, and this is going to be an issue. Now, I would like to continue my class to uh, next subject, um, effects of power ground plane resonances. In the previous slides, I was talking about the source of power ground plane resonance excitation. Now I'd like to move on to the effect of this power ground plane uh, resonances. Number one is the EMI radiations. There will be a standing wave, depending on resonance frequencies, we may have very different um, uh, field distributions, but at the end, because this is open terminations, voltage will be maximum and current will be minimum. That is the uh, uh, condition of open terminations. 
In the circuit theory as well, if you have open circuit, voltage will be there, but current will be zero. That is the definition of open termination. And because here, depending on um, uh, resonance frequencies, we have very strong field uh, will be built up here. Voltage will build up at the end, and this will be a source of EMI radiation, and it's going to create the uh, EMI. And I would say that is being called as edge radiation. If there is uh, some antenna nearby for LTE or RF communications, it will interfere with the RF system and it will degrade the sensitivity of your RF system. And also I would like to emphasize that what frequency we're gonna excite that this resonance frequency itself will be controlled by size of your PCB plane and mode numbers. But how strong that peak will be determined by via position. Because at certain position field will be maximum, at certain point field will be minimum. So when you are designed to minimize this EMI radiations caused by power ground plane resonances, you can control the A and B. And A and B will determine resonance frequencies, but how much EMI peaks or impedance peak as these resonance frequencies will be controlled by via position. In your circuit diagram, you never consider position of your via. In your circuit diagram, you never consider whether it, you have via there. So if you wanna make a very good um, estimation, you have to be able to describe the via position in your circuit diagram, but it will never happen. So that is the reality and circuit design. Circuit design doesn't help much to control the PD and impedance and EMI because they do not never consider via position. In order to consider via position, you need full three-dimensional design uh, file of your package and PCB, and you have to be able to do all the EM simulations of your uh, three-dimensional structures. That is very difficult part, and, and it is uh, consuming a lot of computing powers. Now, I'd like to move on to next uh, effect. Number one is the EMI radiation caused by this uh, uh, power ground plane. Resonance. Second is noise coupling. Let's assume that uh, you have via. Uh, this could be power via. It is creating the resonances. And let's assume that you have signal via. And it has also via two. And because of this, switching current will generate, switching current of power via will create the resonances. As certain resonances, the field inside this power and ground plane will be maximum. Then it will be coupled to a uh, signal via. And in this case, of course, um, the how what frequencies this coupling will be maximum, and uh, that will be determined by this uh, resonance frequencies. How much coupling it has, that it will be controlled by BR positions. BR position one and BR position two. BR position one will control the how much uh, field will be generated and via position two will be controlling how much field will be detected by the signal via and how much it will be coupled. So second case, if we have multiple vias and we're gonna have uh, noise coupling between vias at certain resonance frequencies and the amount of this uh, noise coupling will be determined by position one and position two. Uh, Hyunwoo, I, I, I'm seeing your face there. Would you shortly uh, summarize this slide for me? Uh, 
in this in this slide, I'm explaining the effect of this power and ground plane resonance. 네, 교수님, 그 이번 장에서는 그 플레인 레지던스에 대한 영향에 대해서 설명해 주셨고 첫 번째는 이제 EMI 레디에이션에 대해서 설명해 주셨는데 파워랑 그라운드 플레인 양쪽 면이 지금 오픈 터미네이션이 되어 있어서 이쪽에서 이제 멀티 리플렉션이 일어나게 되고 그 영향으로 인해서 플레 스탠딩 웨이브가 발생하게 됩니다. 그 플레, 발생되는 스탠딩 웨이브에 의해서 이제 끝쪽에서 EMI 레디에이션이 발생하게 되면 알수 있고 그래서 이제 EMI 피크 점에 대한 그 레전스 프리퀀시에서 EMI 피크가 발생하게 되는데 그 EMI 피크가 발생하는 그 프리퀀시는 그 플레인의 디멘션과 이제 비아 포지션에 의해서 발생하는 것을 알수 있었습니다. 그리고 두 번째로 노이즈 커플링에 대해서 언급해 주셨는데 이제 파워와 그라운드 비아에 의해서 그쪽 이 작은 안테나 역할을 하게 돼서 그래서 이제 EMI 레디에이션이 발생하게 되고 그 발생 EMI와 이제 시그널 라인 사이에 노이즈 커플링이 일어나게 되면서 여기에서도 이제 적지 않은 영향이 있고 이제 이것도 비아 포지션과 그 플레인의 디멘션에 의해서 영향을 받는다고 설명해 주셨습니다. 네, 맞습니다. 그러니까 이게 비아가 지금 하나, 두 개짜리 따졌는데 이게 만 개, 십만 개씩 되면 얼마나 복잡하겠어요. 그죠? 그래서 자동화 툴을 만 우리가 이제 인간이 이런 경우는 한번 체크해 봐야 된다. 크리티컬 패스를 지정해 주고 또 디자인 가이드를 주고 나중에 이제 오늘 강의 또는 다음 강의에서 이걸 피해 가는 방법을 이제 오늘 비아 포지션 얘기를 좀 했고 사이즈 얘기를 했습니다. 또 다른 게 있는데 그다 체크를 해야 되거든요. 또는 자동화 시켜서 알고리즘으로 자동으로 설치하게를 해 줘야 돼요. 그럼 이런 거안 하면 대형 문제가 생기냐? 동작은 얼추 하는 것 같은데 굉장히 노이, 그럼 에러가 많이 난다든가 같은 칩을 나 PCB 설계했는데 어느 회사는 한 번에 통과해서 상품이 나오는데 어느 때는 뭐열 번? 이런 실력이 떨어지면 이제 맨날 밤새는 거거든요. 원인을 모르니까 그래서 굉장히 복잡하다. 근데 이 현상을 컴퓨터로 재현을 하려면 이게 3D멘전 구조니까 3차원적인 막스웰 이케이션을 다 풀어야 되거든요. 그것도 수십 기가 컴퓨팅이 엄청 걸린단 말이죠. 그래서 우리 연구실에서 최근에 이런 예측이나 설계를 인간한테 맡기지 말고 현우야 누구한테 맡겨보려고 요즘 연구하고 있죠? AI 컴퓨팅에 의존해서 하려고 하고 있어요. 머신러닝을 이용해 보려는 거죠. 그죠? 네, 맞습니다. 예, 그냥 어느 날툭 머신러닝 하자 이런 것보다는 이런 복잡성. 그리고 하여튼 또 한편으로 이렇게 되려니까 엄청 계산을 많이 해야 돼요. 그래서 GPU와 DRAM 사이에 계산을 빨리 하기 위해서 HBM 구조로 가보자. 뭐 그런 게 이렇게 스토리가 다 맞아 떠, 맞아 가고 있습니다. Uh, let's continue uh, class. So, so far I was talking about the effects of power ground plane resonance is usually which occurs at Uh, PCB and package level. Sometimes this can occur at on chip level as well, but usually the frequency is over 100 gigahertz range because on chip size is very small, so it is usually very occurs very very high frequencies. Now I'd like to move on to the third uh, cases, uh, cross top. Here um, I'm saying that. This BR is the power BR, and this is the ground, uh, the signal BR. Here is the case where we have two signal BRs, uh, BR, uh, signal BR, and this one is also signal BR. Um, I'm assuming that. Uh, Signal one has a connection from top layer to bottom layer. Uh, second case, we also have signal layer connected from top to bottom. Uh, because of uh, return current discontinuities, signal via one will create EMI radiations, and at certain radiations, it will be, especially at resonance frequencies, it will be coupled to. Of via two, signal to signal 
signal coupling was we usually call this is cross talk. At some point in this semester, we was talking about near end cross talk and find the cross talk. Um, so of course here also uh, how much a cross talk will occur will be depending on the via positions one and via position two. This coupling will be maximum at resonance frequencies. Fourth case, I would like to continue fourth case. Let's assume that you have, uh, you are bringing, bring your power and ground. Let's assume you have IO, chip IO, and this IO power is connected to this ground and power is connected to this ground. Because this is the planar structure, we, you, we have to have power via. If we look at the impedance from the IO circuit, it has inductance. Please remember that inductance because of this wire connection and traces and vias. However, whenever you bring your power current from this ground plane, actually, current will be generated inside. This power and ground plane has to supply the charge. And some charge, plus charge, minus charge has to travel along this power and ground plane. It's actually, big, uh, it is applying this charge as a speed of light. And this traveling wave, will be also creating the resonances and that resonance will be responsible for some high frequency peaks. This may occur from 100 megahertz to 10 gigahertz, depending on your PCB size. And this resonance frequencies you're gonna have, your power supply, if you measure the voltage here, you're gonna have certain dingings. And this dinging, if you are doing the free transform, the frequency components of this supply noise ringing is exactly same as this PCB power ground plane resonance. Jonghyun이 한번 number four case 한번 얘기해 볼래요? 이게 조금 어려운데 한번 또 설명 한번 해 보시죠. 포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더포그로운더
어느 특정 프리퀀시에서는 빛의 속도로 공급이 되면서 이런 레조넌스가 또 일어나요. 그래서 PDN 임피던스를 그리면 이 PCB 레조넌스가 어딘가 또 나타나요. 그게 또 이런 데서 전압을 측정해 보면 링잉으로 나타납니다. 물론 요거는 비하 하나 있을 때 얘기고요. 비하가 또만 개, 십만 개가 있으면 또 얘기가 또 달라져요. 서로를 차폐를 해줘. 학생 운동장에 강당에 혼자 있어서 막 떠들면 그 사람이 링잉을 일으켜서 어, 어머니 산울림 같은 걸 일으켜서 공명 일으켜서 멋있는 소리가 나요. 근데 100명, 1000명이 흔들면 와글와글 거려서 뭐가 뭔지도 모르 이런 복잡성이 좀 있기는 있어요. 비하가 한 개냐, 뭐, 심한. 근데 막 몇만 명이 떠드는 어제 하나 야구 이겼는데, 흠성도 이해하려면 이상해, 요즘 걔네들 왜 이기는지. 다음 달에 우리 기아하고 보러 가기로 했는데, 그죠? 기아 팬이 있으면 내 옆자리에 앉아서 내기 합시다. 근데, 근데 10만 개 있는 현상을 알아, 알려고 해도, 그렇죠? 수업 끝나고 10시에 전화 주세요. 아, 뭐 이렇습니다. 뭐 오늘은 약간 좀 그렇습니다. 예. 그래서, 어, 하여튼 오늘은 뭐 10시까지 수업을 하고 또 다음에 더 깊게 깊게 들어가겠습니다. 그래서 이게 학문이라는 게 우리 전기회로, 전자회로 에서 배우죠. 특정한 문제에 미분 방정식 풀어서 와 재밌다. 그것도 물리적으로 잘 이해 못, 그 입시에서 면접 물어보면 캐페시터도 잘 이해 못하는 학생도 많던데 에, 에, 그렇습니다. 근데 리엘은 실제는 홍길동이 아버지를 아버지라 못 부르는 것처럼 캐페시터가 캐페시터가 아니고 인덕터로 봐야 된다는 거고 PCB의 파워그라운 플레인도 캐페시터로 보겠지만 고주파라 가면 인덱턴스가 보이는 거고 더또 현상으로 들어가 보면 빛의 속도로 막 전파가 공급되면서 하여튼 전류도 전파로 공급이 된다 뭐 이런 얘기입니다. 예. 근데 이게 회로도 잘안 나와 있죠. 그죠? 전자기압도 좀 이해해야 되고 파워도 이해해야 되고 시그널도 이해해야 되고 조금 그런 복합적인 것 같습니다. Let's continue a, a class of for five more minutes. Um, Yes, uh, if we have plane resonance, we're going to have higher diagram distortions. Uh, if we have power via, is a ground via, whatever, uh, this via one will create the red signals, at the, the noises, resonance, as resonances. If we have signal via, it will be coupled, then we're going to have eye diagram distortions, and we're going to have Jitter will increase. There might be hundreds of sources which degrade the jitter or which increase the jitter. Uh, we, you remember that we have two different types jitter, random jitter and deterministic jitter. This is the kind of one of the deterministic jitter. And we may have many types of sources to degrade the jitter. Um, this is one possibility. Uh, here is the another case. If we have via, then noise will be coupled to adjacent via. If this is the RF signal traces, it is uh, usually uh, if we have antenna, the received signal uh, amplitude might be microvolt. Nanovolt range, extremely small, because we may have a satellite. A satellite, satellite is sending the electromagnetic wave to your car or to your smartphone, especially for GPS. Um, GPS uh, satellite, GPS satellite might be sending an electromagnetic wave, and GPS uh, at the and your antenna, the mic. Voltage amplitude might be in a range of microvolt or nanovolt or picovolt. Because uh, 
in order to do the digital signal processing, we need to bring this to voltage level. That's why we usually have low noise amplifier. And to detect your actual signal, we usually have a mixer. And to decouple your uh, digital signal, that, that is what you want, you will need to uh, inject local oscillator signal to your mixer. And eventually, the uh, digital signal will be de deconstructed at, by using analog digital converter. But however, in, by via to via coupling, microvolt range of noise coupling could be very typical or nanovolt range. So in this special, but sometimes, sometimes if you are designing your smartphone and if your PCB has this kind of environment, your RNA and your GPS system will never work. So uh, this fourth uh, example of effect by the plane resonance is RF sensitivity degradation. Now let's move on a little bit about the physics more than this. So now let's assume you have power and ground plane and you are connecting the power and ground using the via. Then if you look at the PDN impedance between the two uh, connection, a power via and ground via, is gonna have uh, inductance. This will be determined by usually by via, and you're gonna have resonances uh, because of this uh, plane uh, resonances. And it occurs in a frequency range between 100 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. Depending, if you have a small size A and B, you're gonna smaller A, B, you're gonna have higher resonance frequencies. If you have large PCB, you're gonna have lower resonance frequencies. Now I would like to add one more subject that is related to loss. In your PCB, it is actually made by meta. Please remember metal has surface resistance and especially the surface resistance increase at higher frequencies. At higher frequencies, please remember that current will be conducted on the bottom surface of the power, plus charge will be stored here, and minus charge will be stored on the top surface of the ground metal, and charge will be conducted through the via and the turn current will recharge these minus charges. And this plus minus charge will be consumed by IO current or core current. And the thickness, of this metal that is responsible for current flow is called the skin depth. It is becoming thinner and thinner. So at resonance frequencies, skin depth is very thin and because of that surface resistance is increasing. So it has certain resistances. So without this, resistance, you're gonna have very sharp resonance peaks. However, because of this resonance, the resistance, it is increased, it is, it is becoming like that. Because of the R value in impedance increase, but this resonance may disappear. If you have 
R, if you have R, that is very small number, you have high Q system, then you have very sharp peaks. But if you have higher resistivity, this peak disappear and you have smoothing effect. So sometimes if you have very good material for your PCB and package, you may have very sharp uh, resonance peaks, but sometimes you unintentionally or intentionally, if you add some resistance, sometimes you can add some resistance. In on chip PDN, you want to reduce the resistance to bring it down. But in some cases, this resistance helps to smoothening for smoothening this resonance peaks. Um, uh, Jung Hyun, can you explain this slide for me? Power ground plane is metal lo jeogi deki teumne. Jigeum high Q sangwangeseonu resonance peak ga pyojukhae pyojukhaejeogi deunde eo wido deogwana to wido deji ane sangwangeseo resistance ga jeungaeogi deumne eo low Q sangwangi deugo eo eo budeuroeun eo resonance peak ga eo jeum deo 부드러운 형태로 나타나게 된다고 이해했습니다. 그렇습니다. 그렇습니다. 그래서 어, 의도하든 의도하지 않든 그 PCB 레벨 레조넌스가 안 보이기도 한다는 거예요. 항상 보이는 게 아니라 보일 수도 있고 안 보일 수도 있고 그런 복잡성을 갖고 있는데 어, the PCB 레벨 플레인 레조넌스 has many uh, sources. Number one is the metal resistance, which occurs at PCB package and on-chip level. Also, we have to consider plastic resistance and ESR and the dielectric material loss. We have dielectric materials. Thank you for your class today. Uh, see you next uh, week because on Wednesday we have some election day. Next week, we're going to go more and more deeply into this issue. Thank you for your attention. 감사합니다.